I am trying to platinum as many PlayStation exclusives as I possibly can. So in today's video, I decided to go for Returnals Platinum and 100%. Before heading into this journey, I did not know what I was getting myself into. I'm done, bro. Why? Why? Returnal is a part of the roguelike genre where each attempt or cycle the aim is to defeat enemies in different rooms until you get to a boss and defeat it to progress the story further. But each time you die, you restart from the very beginning, restarting the cycle all over again. I've had some recent experience with this when I completed the God of War Valhalla DLC expansion as that was a roguelike mode which made me rage a little bit but honestly Returnal was on a whole other level. You can't make the difficulty any easier on Returnal as there is only one difficulty which is is what is intended to be played on and on top of that there aren't really any permanent upgrades to unlock besides getting new items to traverse or unlock new areas and the ability to find new artifacts weapons and consumables on each run but of course it's RNG to even find some of these so some runs can come down to pure luck if you don't find a good weapon or other bonuses to help you out originally you couldn't save your game to where you're up to either when you wanted to turn off your PS5 so you had to do everything in one run luckily they added a suspend feature and an update to fix this however this still doesn't help when hunting for collectibles as they never all appear in the same run so it's a guarantee that you're gonna have to keep having to retry to find all of them before we get into that though let's talk about the trophies there are 38 trophies to obtain in total 31 in the base game and 7 in the DLC the guide for the base game gives it a 6 out of 10 difficulty and takes 50 hours to platinum and luckily the DLC is only a 4 out of 10 difficulty and takes only 6 hours to 100% so with that out of the way, let's get into the trophies. So heading into this journey, apparently the first stage is just to enjoy the story, beat the game, and get any miscellaneous trophies that I get along the way. And of course, the first thing the game tells me is that it's going to be a challenging experience. Fantastic. And straight away, we are put into a cinematic where we are introduced to our main playable character, Celine. And unfortunately, starting off the cycle, this is where it begins. She crashes her ship on an alien planet. And essentially this first bit is just a tutorial introducing you to the game's basic mechanics. And we get the big reveal that Celine finds her own dead body, pretty much foreshadowing that we are going to be attempting to do this over and over again. And we also finally get a weapon so we can start shooting up some enemies. Eventually, after making my way through most of the tutorial where I introduced to things like malignant items and malfunctions, I finally make it to my first mini boss of the game and I'm pretty sure they want you to die here as he's pretty tough to start off with. And so of course by dying it triggers the big reveal that everything resets and we go back to the crash site. Also earning ourselves the title card. And just after that I'm rewarded with my first trophy of the game, Eternal Return, for experiencing a new cycle after death. And so now after experiencing my first death it was now time to get good at the game so I could defeat all the bosses and beat the story. And so the next trophy I got was for reaching the max adrenaline level. As you can see down the bottom of the screen where it says 3.6, that is the adrenaline level. And for every three enemies that you kill, your adrenaline level goes up one and the max is five. So pretty much once you've killed 15 enemies in a row without getting hit, because getting hit resets it, you will unlock the adrenaline spike trophy. The next miscellaneous trophy I then got was for finding my first Xenoglyph cipher specifically the ones that you find on the walls in different rooms because then with the cipher you can then translate the actual xenoglyph itself unlocking the trophy cryptic messages now these are going to be a massive pain later on but for now let's continue the next trophy i then got was for performing five successful overloads in a row essentially there's no ammo in this game and instead the weapons overheat so pretty much when you reload, it gives you the opportunity to time it so you can cool it off quicker, similar to how it is in actually Star Wars Battlefront, I believe. And if you do that five times in a row, you get surgical precision. After that, I continue to play through this first main area and eventually I unlocked myself the melee weapon of the game. And by doing this, that signaled the end of the tutorial, unlocking the trophy Atropian Survival for learning the basics of survival on Atropos. 
Shortly after that, I continued on with the main story, and I'm not gonna lie, the main story is very confusing, like, even watching... I had to watch YouTube videos to explain it, and even then, I still don't really know what's going on. I think they left it that way on purpose, so you can kind of create your own idea on what could be happening in this world. But essentially, Celine's house appears for some reason in these ruins on an alien planet. And these house sequences put you into first person, allowing you to explore the house and kind of gives you story details. But like I said, you're going to have to play the game yourself or watch a YouTube video on it because I don't even understand it myself. But eventually, after completing this first sequence, I did get the trophy Welcome Home for completing the first house sequence. After completing the house sequence, I also unlocked the astronaut figurine, which was a new artifact, which pretty much acted as a resurrection item. And so luckily on the same run, I managed to make it to the first boss for the first time. And I did really, really well, making it all the way to the third and final phase on my first attempt. Unfortunately, I did die, but because of the astronaut figurine, it resurrected me, giving me the trophy second chance. And so I took advantage of getting this second chance and I managed to beat the first boss of the game, Frike, unlocking me the trophy A Shadow in the Fog. And so by beating Frike, it did unlock me the ability to head to the next new biome in the game, which were the Crimson Wastes. And straight away, I found this biome a lot tougher than the first biome as they introduced lots of new tougher enemies. And of course, each time I had to start back in the first biome, the overgrown ruins, and make my way back to the portal just to get back to the Crimson Wastes. Also, because I had unlocked the Crimson Wastes though, I had unlocked the new simulation mode, which was a console that could be accessed back in the crash ship. And this simulation mode has a new daily challenge that you can attempt every single day and try and get a better score than everyone else on the leaderboard. And so for this challenge, all I had to do was make my way through the overgrown ruins until I got to the portal, which allowed me to complete the daily challenge, giving me the trophy in field training. Anyway, now that I was done with simulation mode, I headed back to actually beating the game and I ended up getting a trophy for getting enough ciphers to unlock all translation tiers of a Xenoglyph. Shortly after that, I also found my 10th scout log, unlocking me the trophy alternate fates. And from there, here is where I started to struggle with the Crimson Waste area. Area. I was making stupid mistakes and I kept dying to the tougher enemies. Luckily, I did manage to get myself a little bit of dopamine as I got my next trophy, Risk Assessment for finishing calculated risk, which at first I had no idea what that meant, but apparently this game, they base some of the trophies off of the activity cards you find when you bring up the PlayStation pop-up. And honestly, I had no idea about this until I got the trophy, but looking at the guide, all I had to do was open three malignant containers, three malignant sylphiums, three malignant resins, three spoiled resins, and one malignant key. And after I did those, it completed the activity card, popping the trophy. But unfortunately after that, it was back to the grind of making my way through this next biome. I did manage to make a bit more progress as I made my way through the desert area into the mountain area. But again, they introduced even more tougher enemies and I kept dying. About an hour later on one of my runs, I actually ended up picking up a fifth Parasite, which got me the trophy Irreversibly Contaminated, which was for having five parasites on my body simultaneously. Once again though, after getting a nice little miscellaneous trophy, I ended up dying again to some more tougher enemies and heading all the way back to the start. And you can see why this would get pretty frustrating sometimes, as it feels like you're just making no progress at some points and you're just redoing the same thing over and over again, not gaining anything. About two hours later, I did manage to finally make my way to the second boss of the game, Ixion, and I did alright managing to get into his second phase, but I was pretty much one tap, so then I ended up dying. Then, about 40 minutes after that, I managed to finally get back to him once again, actually being pretty high on health going into the second phase, and I got him down to the third phase, barely any health left. No! No! And so, once again, about half an hour later, I managed to get back to Ixion, this time, however, I had a malfunction that lowered my max health bar, and I had to get three melee kills to get rid of it, but of course, against the boss, you can't actually get three melee kills as he's the only enemy, and he, you can't melee the boss, so I was stuck with low health this whole boss fight, and I even managed to get him to his third phase, but of course, once again, I died. 
At this point, I was starting to get very frustrated as once again, I made it back to Ixion. This time I had a malfunction that made my dash cooldown increase by 2.5 seconds. And dashing is very important in this game as it pretty much helps you dodge all kinds of projectiles. So you wanna be able to use it as quickly as possible. So when there's almost a three second delay on using it, it makes it so much harder to dodge. And so once again, I did die. At this point, I actually ended up searching up on YouTube the best way to pretty much beat the game on Returnal as I was starting to struggle so much and one of the main thing it said was to focus on not getting those bad malfunctions like decreasing your health or making it harder to dash so I made sure not to have any malfunctions going into the boss I made sure to try and have a decent weapon that could do a fairly decent amount of damage I also focused a lot on trying to increase my max health as really health is probably the most important thing in this game and so once I had taken these tips on board I found it so much easier to take on Ixion and I did finally managed to beat him unlocking the trophy ascension for defeating Ixion. And so by defeating Ixion I did unlock the next biome which was the derelict citadel. And here I got a very easy trophy for unlocking all the holograms in a Xeno archive. The reason I hadn't done this in an earlier biome is some of the holograms you couldn't get to as you needed a certain piece of equipment. But for the derelict citadel luckily I had all the equipment needed and I was able to get all five of the holograms completing a Xeno archive set for the first time. And at this point, I was feeling very confident after I finally beat that second biome. So heading into this third biome, I actually managed to make it to the boss on my very first attempt, fighting against Nemesis here, who was very, very intimidating. But even though he was very intimidating, I did manage to get him down to his third and final stage. And I actually ended up beating him on my very first attempt. I know, right? Can you believe that? Look at how much health I had left too. I was so close to dying but I managed to just hold on, getting the trophy trial by judgment for defeating Nemesis. And after defeating that boss, Selene is actually finally able to escape off the planet as Astral receives her signal and comes and saves her. And after a really long cinematic, pretty much showing that Selene grew old and died, I think, because she died of old age, well, guess what? Now she's back on Atropos all over again, meaning the cycle never ends. And so after completing that cinematic, I unlocked the trophy failed escape for completing act one. And so as Celine says, it's been 63 years since she was here and time has passed on Atropos as well. So these are the same biomes, but they just look different now because time has passed. And so now I was in the fourth biome of the game, the Echoing Ruins, which of course was similar to the Overgrown Ruins, the first biome, but of course now there's a lot tougher enemies. In these Ruins biomes, I was also able to continue on with completing more of these house sequences. Continuing on after that though, on my very first attempt again on these Ruins, I got all the way to the boss of this area, Hyperion, and once again I was on a roll here full of confidence as I managed to get him to the third and final phase and absolutely destroy him, unlocking the trophy Silence the Song for defeating Hyperion. And so after beating him I was now able to move into the next biome, no longer the Crimson Wastes but instead the Fractured Wastes. But I don't know what it was about the Crimson and Fractured Waste biomes, but again, I struggled on this biome. It's just really hard. They bring in these new enemies that just come at you from all angles, and they just make it super hard. So once again, I died, losing my streak of killing two bosses in a row. And so of course, I had to make my way all the way back there again, and again, I died. And so once again, I was getting kind of frustrated that I wasn't making progress, but luckily for me, in this biome there is actually no final boss. You just have to find three keys to unlock the ability to get to the next biome. So no boss in this one, thankfully. And so eventually I managed to get all three keys, which allowed me the ability to upgrade my suit so I could last underwater and enter into the Abyssal Scar, the final biome of the game. And let me tell you, this is probably the hardest one. The enemies were super tough down here and I died a lot. So after about four hours of trying, I was starting to make really good progress, but unfortunately I did die just before making it to the final boss. And just after that, as I went to go back to the final biome to try once again, this happened. What the hell just happened? Hello? 
Bro, the game just crashed. Nah, I'm done. I'm done. I'm so done. Oh my god, the game just crashed. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Oh my god, it's full crapped itself. It won't even close. Oh my god, it's full broken my PlayStation, bro. Straight up just broke my PlayStation. What the hell? I legitimately thought that I had broken my PlayStation 5. I had to unplug my PlayStation and plug it back in to full on power reset it. And even then, it wasn't booting up properly. And when it finally did, I had to like reboot the whole system from a black screen. It was very weird and it didn't look too good. Luckily, everything was fine. But goddamn, this game was really hurting me. Anyway, after that, about an hour more of grinding, I finally made it to the final boss of the game, a fire. and lucky for me, I had the best weapon in the game, which is the Electro Pylon Driver, which essentially sends out these electricity traps that stay there and deal damage over time to the enemies, and you can just spam these out, and then all you have to do is worry about dodging the projectiles so you don't take damage, and the bullets pretty much just do the damage for you, as they do it over time. And so even though I was low health against Ophine the whole time, using this weapon, it allowed me to really focus on dodging all the projectiles, making sure I didn't take any damage at all, until eventually the weapon did enough damage over time to take the boss out for me. And by doing this, I of course unlocked the trophy, Inner Darkness. For defeating a fire and so with that i went through one more final cutscene here after watching the entirety of it the credits then rolled after skipping through the credits i managed to get the trophy last drive for finishing act two and with that done it was now time to move on to stage two which was to get the secret ending in act three and also clean up the rest of the miscellaneous trophies so in order to finish act three what I first had to do was find a sun face fragment in each biome. And now that I had all the equipment in the game and I was able to explore each area, that means I was able to find all of them fairly easily. Also by using a guide helped as well. But by getting my first sun face fragment in the overgrown ruins, that was one out of six. And also if anyone was wondering how I got between each time period of the game there's like a time machine you unlock after beating the game allowing you to go between the first three biomes and the second lot of three biomes and so after probably about two and a half to three hours later after grinding out finding all the sun face fragments as again it's rng so the rooms don't always spawn in once i had all six i was able to unlock the final house sequence and after completing this final house sequence i do get the trophy sins of the mother for completing all the house sequences. And by doing this, I also unlocked this key here, which means I need to go back and defeat the final boss once again to unlock the car at the end of the game, which will give the final cutscene, finishing off Act 3. So that's exactly what I did. I went and fought the final boss, Ophion, and beat him once again, allowing me to proceed to the car. And finally, with the key, I was able to unlock it, which triggered one final cutscene, which was really weird. But after that was over, I did manage to get the trophy white shadow for finishing act three so after that i then went for the final two miscellaneous trophies which was for reaching 200 percent max integrity slash health and reaching the max level for weapon proficiency and the best way to do this was to pretty much start in biome four and make your way through every single room picking up as much health items as possible and also weapon proficiency bonuses as well and so theoretically by the time i would get to biome six i would be maxed out on both health and weapon and proficiency and actually whilst going for this trophy i ended up getting echoes of the past for finishing the echoing ruins survey and this is pretty much for getting every single collectible in the echoing ruins i'll get to these later on for now i actually ended up failing my first attempt at getting 200 percent health and so after taking a little bit of a break i came back and gave it another shot very importantly i made sure to buy these integrity augment in each biome as it added an extra 25 percent to your health so that's already a quarter of what you need to add on. And so shortly after that, Nelly dying in the same place I did before, I did manage to get the trophy Hardened Shell for achieving 200% max integrity. And luckily, continuing on with that same run, because I had so much health now, as I continued to get more after getting 200%, I probably had around about 300% here. 
I breeze my way through the final biome, earning my way up to getting 30 proficiency level. So here I managed to find my final calibrator, which unlocked me the trophy adapting to circumstance for achieving weapon proficiency level 30. By getting those final two trophies, I was now able to move on to the third and final stage of the base game, completing the survey trophies. And this was by far probably the worst part of the game. So these surveys you have to do for all six biomes in the game. Luckily, I already done biome four just by pure luck. As you can see here, there's six things you have to do in each biome. You have to explore one secret area, which is easy survive the containment area which is fairly easy as well and eliminating the boss which i've already done because of the main story and the other three were for scanning every xeno archive which is fairly simple once you've got all the equipment in the game retrieving every scout log which was one of the harder ones and then the worst one for collecting every Xenoglyph Cypher, as because they are RNG and you don't know which ones you've picked up already it makes it so annoying to try and find them all and so to start off with, I pretty much just went back to the first biome and kept running through it, hoping that eventually I would find the ciphers or scout logs that I would need. And the scout logs weren't too bad to find as I knew exactly which one I wasn't missing, as in the collectible screen you could see what number or name of scout log you were missing, and then on the guide I could just look at that and try and hope that I would get the room where it was. Also to start out, I was being pretty stupid and continuing to fight the enemies as well, which wasted a lot of time in each room, as most rooms you can just run through them without having to worry about killing enemies. So because I was doing that, it took me around about 4 hours of just mindlessly running around hoping that I would get the final scout log. Luckily I had found all of these ciphers, which trust me, it's going to be worse than the other biomes, but yeah, I just needed one final scout log and I just couldn't seem to find it no matter what I did. So the craziest thing happened right i watched a youtube video on where what room it could possibly spawn in and what do you know on my very next run that room spawned so i guess it was just fate oh my god no way i just found it are you serious oh my past the ruins <laughs> finish the overgrown ruins survey bro ain't no way i just complained about not finding the final one and then it spawns in this game is why have i never had this yep somehow the final scout log i needed was in one of the tutorial rooms like this reclaimer here i'd been using these throughout all the different biomes but apparently i never found the first one in the first biome go figure so after that i headed into the crimson waste survey hoping that my lock had turned around i still had to find quite a few ciphers quite a few scout logs and finish off the xeno archive i knew the archive would be easy and i was hoping the scout log and ciphers would be easy but this almost broke me because after about an hour and a half of making barely any progress this happened no no tyler did it again it did it again bro Damn, Returnal's like... Oh, I'm sorry, I don't want to play this game anymore, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. Oh, no. If you can't, just... then it's your oh, console's yeah. bricked I again. I think I just clapped myself. I don't know why I did that. Oh. So, yes, Returnal broke my console once again, meaning I had to full-on reboot it once again, as it wouldn't work if I didn't do that. And so, at this point, I was so done with this game, I literally did not want to play it anymore. I just wanted it to be over. And so, I did finally make one good decision which was to just run past all the enemies in the first area so i could get through to crimson waste as quick as possible not wasting any time but the problem was that in crimson waste there's like four different areas there's one here in the desert then there's the first area in the mountain then you take a teleporter to a second area in the mountain and then you take another teleporter to the final area just before the boss. And the problem was, I didn't know where the ciphers would be. If it would be in the desert area, the second area, the third area, or the fourth area. On the guide, it tells you where the ciphers are. But the thing is, I didn't know which one I was missing, as there's no way to tell. Because there is no collectible screen for the ciphers. And so once again, I pretty much spent two hours of making no progress on the ciphers. I did manage to find the scout log, but because the ciphers are so... RNG I still had four more to find and I just had no clue on how I could find those four because it felt like I'd explored every single room the crazy thing is they literally updated the game to try and make these cipher locations easier to find and I was still struggling and so after struggling for hours on end I decided to look up on the internet to see if anyone else was struggling and what they did to fix this and I found the best forum on PSN profiles that literally saved 
this game. Shout out to Deathy, me, and Archangel who figured out that you can trap these ciphers through the activity card, and Archangel went out there and lined it up according to the collectible guide on PSN profiles made by OptiNubi. So shout out especially to Archangel who literally made a fresh save just so he could figure out which number collectible on the PSN card matched with the number that the OptiNubi had on his collectible guide. So if I needed number 9 cipher on the activity card then apparently that lines up with OptiNubi's number 1 cipher on his guide. And luckily for you out there, if you do want to go for this Platinum, OptiNubi has actually integrated what activity card aligns with what cipher straight into his guide as you can see after seeing Archangel's reply, which makes it a hell of a lot easier to all see it on the one guide. When I was doing it, it hadn't been updated to that yet, so I still had to cross-reference from the forum back to the guide, but it was still better than nothing. And so by finding this method out, it made it literally so much easier. I found Cypher 17, Cypher 18, and Cypher 19. Because of the guide now, I knew exactly which ciphers I were missing, and I knew which rooms that they would spawn in. And funnily enough, most of them all appeared in the third area, which thinking back on it makes sense, as I explored quite a lot of area 1 and 2, where Whereas area 3 I didn't really go to as much, but finding that out from the guide I knew that I could just head straight through the desert and then there was a teleporter that took you all the way to the final area and then there was another teleporter that took you all the way back to area 3 and I would just keep rinsing and repeating this until I would find the final cipher. And after a couple of cycles trying this, this happened. Are you ready for this? Yes, ascending the mountain, finish the Crimson Way survey. And so thankfully that was done and now I had the key to finishing the final three. And it was a bit of a breeze, the only problem was with the derelict citadel, I still had to do a containment area, which is like a mini boss fight area. And that took me about an hour because I was botting out, but eventually I got that one done. And after that all I had to do was find the last couple of ciphers, and then all I had to do was find the final scout log. You ready for this? I don't think you're ready for this. Final scout log. Give me the trophy. Through the forgotten city. Finish the derelict citadel survey. Let's go. Come on. And from there, it was pretty much smooth sailing as all I had to do was finish the final two biomes. I found the last one. I found the last one. I found the last one. That's so good, bro. In the same run. Uh, yes. Frozen in time. Finish the fractured waste survey. Oh my god, this is it. This is it. Yes, the room spawned in. Clarity in blindness. Are you ready for this? Platinum time, come on. Last scout log, thank god for that. This platinum sucks. Boom. Submerged in memories. Finish the abyssal scar survey. And... Helios. Collect all trophies. Except for the DLC, still got to do that. Uh, yes, but at least the stupid RNG is over. Let's go. Come on. With that, I had finally gotten Returnal's Platinum and also completed probably the most RNG trophy I've ever done to date. So thankfully it was over, but of course, as you heard me say, it was still time to finish off the DLC. And luckily for me, the DLC was loads of fun, there was no RNG trophies, and it was very easy to complete, so let's get into it. So I entered into the Tower of Sisyphus for the first time, and essentially, it still got the roguelike element, but instead of going through different biomes and areas, it's just one massive tower and you just go through different floors and phases, making your way up to try and ascend the tower. And after every 20 rooms, there's a boss at the end, which means you go on to the next phase after that. The other good thing about this DLC is you level up your weapons very quickly and also gain a lot of health quickly, meaning you can absolutely shred through the rooms and just destroy enemies and it makes it so much fun. That being said though, the enemies do also do a lot of damage back, so you've got to be a lot more careful with dodging, but it just makes for a much quicker paced, fast action gameplay which I liked a lot. And so to start things off with the trophies, all I simply had to do, just like in the main game, was die for the first time, and then I got the trophy Eternal Ascent for die and returning in the tower. After dying for the first time too, I also unlocked the first story cutscene of this DLC, which was to lay on this hospital bed here and complete the hospital sequence. And of course, by doing this, I unlocked myself the trophy Broken, Restored, 
empty. After that, on my very next run, I managed to make it all the way to Algos, the boss of this DLC, and his first form, and I managed to defeat him pretty easily and get the trophy the Watcher for defeating Algus's first form. And just to speed things along here as the DLCs, it is fun, but the trophies are fairly simple. So the next trophy I got was for actually beating Algus's final form. So I had to go through phase two and all 20 rooms and beat his second form, which was fairly simple. And then go through 20 rooms to get to the end of phase three and defeat his final form. And luckily on my first attempt, I did manage to beat him, getting the trophy eyes closed for defeating his final form. After defeating the boss, I knew I only had a one more miscellaneous trophy and two final story trophies to complete. And looking at the guide, I realized I kind of stuffed up a bit. Similar to the base game where you had to collect six sun face fragments to get the secret ending, in the DLC you have to collect six poppies in order to unlock the final hospital sequence, and then you have to defeat the final boss again, and then that unlocks the final cutscene to get the secret ending. So really, if I had just followed this strategy here, I could have got it done a lot quicker, but instead that means I had to go back through each room a couple more times, get the poppy, and because only one spawns on each run, I would have to restart the cycle, get the next poppy, so on and so forth forth and then I had to defeat the final boss again so really I could have got this a lot quicker. On the bright side though it did give me time to finish off the final miscellaneous trophy which was for getting 100 kills with Disgorges and this was a brand new weapon consumable that had been added to the DLC and there were multiple different types but they were all super OP and absolutely melted enemies and so in the end I just had to use it a couple more times and I got the trophy destroyer for killing a hundred hostiles with disgorges so after that I just had to grind out getting the rest of the poppies and luckily I could save up all the disgorges for the boss fight and I could absolutely melt Algus's health as you can see making the boss fights go by a lot quicker and so after that I was able to get the sixth and final white poppy meaning I could complete the final hospital sequence, unlocking myself the trophy Empty Embrace for opening the locked door. And so from there, all I had to do was defeat the final boss once again, even though I'd already done it, but I kept botting out on the way there as I was trying to rush things through. So I probably wasted like two or three hours just dying over and over again for dumb reasons. And so eventually I did make it to Algus's final form once again, um, and I made sure to make it count by beating him. So then I was able to enter into the hospital once again and get the final secret ending of the game, resulting in this. Find release. Gain a moment of peace. Let's go 100%. Ah, I don't understand the story, but I got the 100%. Let's go. And so with that, I finally had 100%ed Returnal. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. I was so thankful I would never have to play this game ever again. Look, it is a fun game, but seriously, the Platinum experience kind of ruins it. I would highly recommend that you try this game out and play it for yourself, because seriously, the gameplay is fun. The shooting, the fast action, quick pace, especially the DLC. I love the DLC. That was really good. But going for the Platinum and those RNG trophies just absolutely sucked. Then again though, now that they've updated the collectible guide on PSN profiles and you know exactly which ones you're missing, it does make it a lot easier. So if you're still willing to give it a go, I would highly recommend you use that as it makes the experience so much more smoother and you won't hate yourself. So with that being said, thank you for watching the video. I really appreciate it. And I'd also just like to say a massive thank you to all those who have subscribed. We hit 3,000 subscribers, which is so awesome. And we're on our way to hitting 4,000 subscribers. I can't thank you guys enough. So if you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. It means the world to me. And so I'll see you guys all in the next video where I'm very dumb. I, you know, just completed a really hard game that just annoyed me. And so you know what I decided to do? I decided to start going for all the Crash Bandicoot Platinums. I'll see you guys all in those videos. Thank you for watching.